Welcome to Module 6. This part of the lecture will discuss the anatomy of all organs associated with the respiratory system. Each segment of the respiratory tract will be tackled with their specific anatomical descriptions. Although more visibly recognized through the use of microscope, topics on the bronchial tree will be introduced for the students to imagine the branching of the bronchi within the lungs. You will also learn in this module the composition of a pleura as well as the basic information about the mediastinum in general. At the end of this module, you should be able to identify the organs and associated structures in each segment of the respiratory tract and trace the bronchial tree and lobation of the lungs. The function of the respiratory system is to conduct inspired air containing oxygen along the respiratory passages to the areas where gaseous exchange takes place and to conduct the expired air containing carbon dioxide out of the body. It also functions for the phonation, olfaction, heat regulation, and acid-base balance. The passage of the respiratory system starts from the nose, including the nasal cavity and the paranasal sinuses, to the pharynx, specifically the nasopharynx, to the larynx, trachea, and bronchi. The actual exchange of gases can happen at the respiratory bronchioles and mostly in the alveoli. Functionally, here are some of the basic roles of the parts of the respiratory system. The nose has olfactory receptors that provides environmental information to the brain. The nasal cavity and conchae warm, moisten, and filter the air. The larynx, on the other hand, protects the entrance to the trachea, regulates inspiration and expiration, and has a major role in vocalization. Other respiratory passages facilitate water and heat exchange. For anatomical consideration and future terminologies that you might encounter in your practice, the respiratory system can also be divided into upper and lower respiratory tract. The upper respiratory tract is composed of the structures of the head, including the nose, paranasal sinuses, and the nasopharynx, while the lower respiratory tract is composed of the larynx, the trachea, and the lungs. The point of reference or the boundary between the two tracts is the cranial end of the larynx. In the next slides, we will discuss the anatomy of each structure mentioned. Let us begin with the nose. The nose, in a broad sense, refers to the external nose and the associated nasal cartilages and internal nose or the nasal cavity with its scrolls of conchae. The muzzle is the collective term for the facial portion of the respiratory system and the rostral portion of the digestive system. Here is a lateral and two cranial views of the nose. The nasal plane is a flattened apical portion of the nose devoid of hairs and skin gland. It is being moistened by the lateral nasal gland. The nostrils are the external nares or the external opening of the nasal cavity. The philtrum is the groove in the upper lip and middle of the nose separating the nostrils, while the wing of the nostrils is the thickened dorsolateral portion of the nostril. Nasal cartilages are structures giving the nose its structural appearance. There is a paired dorsal lateral nasal cartilage and ventral lateral nasal cartilage. An accessory cartilage is also present. The nasal septum is a cartilaginous septum or a perpendicular median plate separating most of the nasal airway into right and left nasal cavities. Grossly, here are the appearances of the nasal cartilage. Please note that the size and shape of the nostrils are dictated by the nasal cartilage. The nasal cavity is the facial portion of the respiratory tract extending from the nostrils to the caudal nares or quanae. As mentioned, it is divided into halves by the median nasal septum. The nasal cavity can be divided into three parts. The rostral part contains the vestibule inside the nostril. The middle part contains the nasal concha, while the caudal part contains the ethmo turbinates. The nasal cavity is filled internally by nasal conchae. Here is a gross section of the nasal cavity. Nasal conchae are cartilaginous or ossified scrolls covered with nasal mucosa.
they occupy the major portion of each nasal cavity. An alar fold is the extension of the ventral nasal concha and it terminates within the vestibule by a bulbous enlargement that fuses to the wing of the nostrils. There are three named conchae. To orient yourself, here is a cross section and a sagittal section of the nasal cavity. The dorsal nasal concha is an upper concha extending from the ethmoid bone's cribriform plate to the rostral nasal cavity. The ventral nasal concha is extensively folded structure filling the middle lumen of the nasal cavity, while the ethmoidal concha is a delicate mucosa-covered bony scrolls known as ethmoturbinates filling the caudal part of the nasal cavity. On one hand, nasal meatuses are passageway between concha. The dorsal nasal meatus is a narrow passageway between the dorsal nasal concha and the nasal bone. The middle nasal meatus is the passageway between the dorsal nasal concha and the ventral nasal concha. The common nasal meatus is a narrow vertical space between the median nasal septum and the conchae, while the ventral nasal meatus is known as the largest and located between the ventral nasal concha and the hard palate. As previously discussed under the digestive system, the pharynx is a common passageway for food and air. The nasopharynx is the respiratory part of the pharynx. From the nasal cavity, the air will enter the nasopharynx, then to the laryngopharynx. It will then enter the larynx to the trachea. The larynx is a short cartilaginous tube that connects the lower part of the pharynx with the trachea and contains the organ of phonation. It is composed of laryngeal cartilages as shown here. The epiglottis or epiglottic cartilage is an unpaired spade-shaped and the rostralmost cartilage giving the structure to the epiglottis which closes the laryngeal opening during deglutition. The thyroid cartilage is an unpaired largest laryngeal cartilage and open dorsally. It is the Adam's apple in man. The cricoid cartilage is an unpaired signet ring-like shaped cartilage connecting the thyroid cartilage and the trachea while the arytenoid cartilage is the only paired laryngeal cartilage. It is irregularly articulating medially with the cricoid cartilage. It has a number of processes called vocal, muscular, corniculate, and cuneiform. The vocal process is a ventral projection for the attachment of the vocal cords. The muscular process is a lateral process for the insertion of the intrinsic laryngeal muscle called the cricoarytenoidus. The corniculate process is the dorsal horn-like process forming the dorsal opening of the laryngeal opening, while the cuneiform process is the most rostral among the four. The trachea is a non-collapsible cartilaginous and membranous tube which continues the respiratory pathway from the cricoid cartilage of the larynx to the helus of the lungs where it bifurcates into right and left principal bronchi. The cervical part runs from the larynx to the thoracic inlet, while the thoracic part continues at the bifurcation. The trachea is composed of cartilaginous C-shaped tracheal rings. Annular ligaments join tracheal cartilages to one another. It permits the trachea a considerable flexibility to allow movements of the neck. The trachealis muscle is a smooth muscle that completes the dorsal side of the trachea. The tone of this muscle affects the diameter of the trachea. The bifurcation is the splitting of the trachea between the principal bronchi above the base of the heart just to the right of the midline. The tracheal carina is the ridge at the bifurcation between two principal bronchi. Sometimes, this is referred to as the tracheal bifurcation. The tracheal rings of dogs are 42 to 46 in numbers. There are slender and U-shaped. The ends of the rings do not meet dorsally so that the trachea has a membranous dorsal wall. Now let us discuss the bronchial tree. The right and left pulmonary bronchi are short, thick segment entering each lung helus, 
it will divide into secondary bronchi. The secondary bronchi or the lobar bronchi are the divided continuation of the principal bronchi ventilating each lung lobe. It will give rise to tertiary bronchi. Take note that the secondary bronchi dictates the lobation of the lungs. The tertiary or the segmental bronchi are branches of the lobar bronchi ventilating the bronchopulmonary segment. These are self-contained, cone-shaped section of a lung tissue within a lobe. The bronchioles are small tubes with no cartilaginous support in contrast to the bronchi. They arise from the segmental bronchi. The bronchioles are the last conducting segment. The respiratory bronchioles are terminal bronchioles whose walls contain some alveoli and allow gas exchange. The alveolar duct are passage from the respiratory bronchioles surrounded by the alveoli, while the alveolar sacs are the termination of the respiratory bronchioles surrounded by the alveoli. The lungs are paired structures which occupy the greater part of the thoracic cavity. The color depends on the amount of blood it contains. If bleeding is complete, the color is pink, while if large amount of blood remains after death, the lungs will be dark red in color. Interlobar fissure divides the lungs into lobes. The general lobation is two lobes in the left lung and four lobes in the right lung. Lobes of the lungs are defined by the presence of lobar or secondary bronchi. As you can see here, the left lung has a left cranial lobe and a left caudal lobe. The left cranial lobe is further subdivided into a cranial part and a caudal part. On the other hand, the right lung is divided into four lobes. The right cranial lobe, the middle lobe, the right caudal lobe, and an accessory lobe. Here is a schematic representation of the medial side of the lung showing the hilus. Among the structures that pass through the hilus are the principal bronchus, pulmonary arteries, and the pulmonary veins from the mediastinum to the lungs. The serosal lining of the thoracic cavity and the thoracic organs form the pleura. The pulmonary or the visceral pleura is the serosal lining on the surface of the lungs, while the parietal pleura is the serosal lining at the walls of the thorax including the mediastinum and the diaphragm. The space between the visceral and the parietal pleura is called the pleural space. Pleural cupola is the cranial extent of the pleural cavity extending through the thoracic inlet while the costodiaphragmatic recess is the potential space between the costal wall and the dome-shaped diaphragm. The mediastinal recess is the space filled by the accessory lobe of the right lung between the mediastinum and the plica vena cava. Mediastinum is the cleft or wall formed by the contact between the two mediastinal pleura. Structures cranial to the heart are located at the cranial mediastinum. The heart itself is at the middle mediastinum while the structures below the heart are located in a location termed as caudal mediastinum. And that ends our discussion on Module 6. After finishing this lecture, you are now ready to take the assessment prepared about the respiratory system.